Joining us is Kevin Warsh. As you know, he's a distinguished visiting fellow at the Hoover Institution, former member of the Fed Board of Governors. And Kevin, it's great to have you here on set. Hey, Becky, great to be here. Let's, um, let's talk about what we've been talking about for a week at this point. Um, Jay Powell spoke last week. The markets thought they heard that there were going to be lots of rate cuts coming next year, and it was off to the races. Since then, we've had a parade of Fed officials. Uh, here on this program, we've had John Williams, Austin Goolsby, and others. They all seem to be walking back what Jay Powell said, trying to throw some more caution into this, and telling the markets, baby, basically, um, you're interpreting what this a little bit differently. What, what's your take? So... Um... I'm thoroughly confused by this discussion, so I don't know how much light I can shed on it. Um, uh, it should have been quite clear from the testimony, from the speech, from the dots that the Fed gave, that they were saying the party is back on and markets took that seriously. You know, they spent most of the last year and a half putting the punch bowl away, locking up the liquor cabinet. And um, a week ago, less than a week ago, they put the punch bowl back out they told the teenagers they were going away for the weekend. They <laughs> bought some new bottles of alcohol, and they sh somehow are surprised that the party get got going again. It's very strange. Um, I suspect they think that markets have now gone too far, but this is an incredibly unproductive discussion about what are they talking about, what's the big issue. They should be having hard discussions about what's happening in the economy. Why have their inflation forecasts been so wrong? Um, what are the drivers of global supply and demand? And instead, we're talking about what they're talking about. Uh, I think it's a very dangerous thing. They should be creating option value. The world is uncertain. Instead, what they did a week ago was tie their own hands behind their back. Okay, let me, let me run with that analogy a little bit. I, my take on it was that they maybe thought the teenagers had grown up and were adults and could handle the truth. Because what I heard from Jay Powell was that I'm not really sure where things are headed. Um, and even at the time, we were talking, saying that that's unusual for a Fed chairman to be um, not more oblique, to kind of say, yeah, we're not really sure where things are headed. The market heard what it wanted to hear. What I heard was a, a Fed chairman speaking a little more openly and honestly than we've had in the past. So what I heard was premature triumphalism. What I heard was, hey, we won. We finally beat inflation down. What I also heard was, you know, it really was transitory. We didn't really make any mistakes. It just took longer for supply chains to work and the rest. I just don't believe that. I think the reason inflation came down is they finally got the policy rate up. Um, I think what I heard was they think the economy's in great shape. The labor markets are strong and everything's great and that they're gonna get inflation back to target. So markets took that and they said, fabulous news. Um, you know, what I think is most troubling is the asymmetry. When uh, inflation's... Way in. Yeah, when inflation's running a little below their target by a couple of tenths of percent, they take out the punch bowl. Uh, they spend a year, year and a half trying to show their resolute, making references to Paul Volcker. We still have inflation above 3%, a lot of cross currents in the economy, uh, hardworking Americans still trying to get take-home pay that is higher than their inflation. Take out the punch bowl again. Uh, listen, I, I don't know where the economy is going to be next year, but neither do they. You know, the Fed's comparative advantage is in the, in the printing press that they've been provided. It's not in their prowess in forecasting. And all this talking strikes me as deeply counterproductive in an uncertain world. I mean, as part of the problem, the dot plots themselves, if you've got to make a guess where things are, um, it, it, it may be lends to too much credence that you believe in those expectations? Because I look at what's happening in the Red Sea right now and wonder if that's going to be something that brings inflation back in a real quick way. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. Um, first of all, the chairman and his committee can decide what to do with the dot plots. As I thought from the outset, they should throw them away. Yeah. Yeah. This forward guidance is deeply unproductive. I really don't know why they continue to be at it. You know, the Red Sea, as you referenced, is one example. Imagine a, a, a new front on the war in the Middle East. Imagine provocations in the South China and East China Sea. Oil prices can go from 70 to 90, in which case they're going to be scrambling. American people will feel more inflation. Inflation expectations can move back up. And so what are they going to do? Race the other side of the boat again? Yeah. You know, listen, it's an uncertain world. Uh, the politics in Washington are a mess, as you've been reporting. The job of the central bank is to be a sober beacon of stability. 
I suspect that's what they're trying to do in the front page of the Wall Street Journal today. But this looks to me like uh, like an unnecessary error. Yeah, you're talking about the article by Nick Timoros. I know uh, Joe's got a question. Yeah, too. Kevin, um, they finally had us convinced higher for longer because they said it so many different ways and as stridently as they could. This has not been long. This I, I looked up long in the dictionary, <laughs> and this 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 has not been uh, long. And, and when we had uh, Austin Goldsby on, uh, I, Goldsby, I actually said. It, it, I, I, it was posited that we wanted to normalize rates from the financial crisis and from the pandemic. So we wanted to get back to normal, where maybe this is where rates were in a, a, you know, bef before we had these major shocks to the system. So we finally get back there. There's no indication that the economy is weakening. So what is the rationale for moving off being normalized again. That's, that's what I did. But I'll just tell you, someone said if you use the Taylor rule and you do PCE, you are, it does look like we're tighter than we need to be right now. So maybe some rates would make sense. But um, I, I don't know. It's confounding. It, yeah, I think, I think your last word's the right word. This is very puzzling kind of stuff. Um, they're giving transparency a vetter, very bad name. I think they don't know, and, I not, and I'm sympathetic to their humility about where the economy should be, but to promise, which is effectively what they're doing, that they're going to be cutting rates next year when they don't know the state of the economy is forcing them to tie their own hands behind their back. Recent experience suggests that's a very bad idea. If I had to come up with a single theory to justify what we've witnessed over the last week or so, Joe... It's that they believe what Paul Krugman now seems to believe, which is it really was transitory, in which case rates can go back to zero. This is what markets are so enthused about. Uh, QE can come back on. There are no costs to this. Uh, listen, at the end of the day, it sure looks to me like Washington's doing everything it can to put foam on the runway. Now, we put foam on the runway in the crisis in 08 when things were coming off the rails. The economy is in pretty good shape, uh, and they're putting foam on the runway to goose the economy in 2024. You think, you think the Fed, when you say Washington, yeah. you think yeah. Fed, or you think... Yeah, purely Fed. a coincidence it's an election year, Kevin. Pure, think, purely a coincidence. Well, well, well uh, listen, I think, I think the answer is, is it the Fed or someone else in Washington? My answer is yes. Uh, <laughs> the Treasury is now issuing T-bills that they did not say they'd be issuing before to take duration out of the market. If I didn't know better, that sounds like QE while the Fed is doing the opposite in QT. Spending a bunch of money that we don't have and borrowing it from overseas to strengthen the economy next year, um, I think they're going to end up with a, with a hotter economy than if they had been running more prudent policy at a time of full employment. And there are no free lunches. We've, we, we've learned that the hard way. Wall Street is no doubt benefiting from this, but I fear that Main Street, once again, is taking the risks. If I mean, all you're doing is living on income instead of assets, they're making a bet with your paycheck next year.